This is Mastering Mathematics with your teacher, Karen Weston. Hello, Antigua Barbuda and the rest of the world. Welcome again to another in the series, Mastering Mathematics. Of course, we're going to make certain that mathematics is the biggest thing on your calendar and in your day's activities. Because even when it's not the day for mastering mathematics, you're going to be working it. It is a program sponsored by the Ministry of Education using its EBU unit, our Mathematics Center, and ABS Television. We are going to make certain that our classroom is the biggest one in the whole world, okay? And everybody is going to be mathematicians. Yes, we started looking back a bit, and because we know we have our primary school children listening too, started making certain that we can consolidate the whole concept of decimal, its origin, and how it is related to our ordinary number systems. Yesterday, we asked you to um, actually get into some exercise, and I had my studio guests here, Aisha and Washington, and my cameraman, who is a very good mathematician too, Jetta, telling me exactly how I should be doing these. And you were at home comparing your answer and to say, yes, I get it. Yes, I get it. All right. Today, we're going to give you some more of that because we want to make certain that after this, there is no more confusion and that you understand what decimal means. So, for formers, when you get to CXC and the first question is asking for decimal, it started right in your grade four, it started right in your grade three, it started right in your grade two. At this infant age, because these mathematicians understand, they would not have been asking the children to give the answer to two decimal places. But what would they have been saying? To the nearest hundredth, okay? To the nearest thousandth, okay? These are the things, but it's still three decimal places. And that is where it is, all right? So we have got to make certain that that connection stays with you. It is still our number place values, okay? We are accustomed to our whole numbers, ones, tens, etc. And then we also have to know at my right here, at my left here, we also have the decimal numbers, which are less than one. And that is where our decimals come from. So I hope you have your pencils sharp and your pens ready, your pads, and we are ready to go because today I want to write, you to write these decimals in order of size. And it goes from smallest first. Okay, it goes from smallest first. I have some other numbers on the other side because I want to make a comparison. Before you do the exercise, I'm going to be telling you something because that point has got to be known and you're not going to get it right away. The bright students would, but we also have to tell you what you have to look for. Because even in terms of dealing with decimals, we have got to make certain that our units are the same. Instead of units, we talk about positions, okay? Because at this particular age, it's very difficult for our little children to understand 0 0.6 and 0 0.19. So we are going to say to them, the, large, the last position, which is furthest away from our decimal point, we would make certain that all our decimals are in that unit, and then they can compare them. Okay, when we did what we were asked yesterday, start with the largest numbers first, look at what the exercise was. All the decimal points, okay, all the decimal points were in the tenth position. So students had no difficulty in terms of saying which would have been largest, okay. Look, you see, because if we had to ask them to translate them into fractions, our denominators for all of these would have been over 10. And this is what I'm talking about. For this first one, 
0 0.7 would be the same thing as 7 tenths. Oh, so it's 7 over 10. 0 0.9 would have been the same thing as 9.10. Okay, 1.3 would have been the same thing as 1 and 3 over 10. And we have 5, our whole number. Okay? Here, when I'm going to ask them to do from smallest first, you would note that we have some of our decimal numbers with two places, the first, and some with one place. I guarantee that our students would need to be told that we have got to make certain that we make all of them start from the same position, okay? So that, so for example, I would say, because we have two numbers here, they would know right away that they can write 0 0.58, that this is hundredths. So this could be written as, so let's get rid of that part over there now and show you a little something here. So just before I ask you to do them in terms of size, I'm telling you something, because that is very important for the students to understand. I don't want another child coming and saying, because that's what my teacher said to do. I want them to give me the reasoning for it, okay? So if I have 2, 0 0.58, and we have 0 0.6, and we have 0 0.19, and we have 1.4, what we're dealing with here, we're dealing with hundreds, and we're also dealing with tenths, okay? And we're saying, so that is like saying you're mixing up two things at two units at the same time. So we're going to ask them to make it be one. So they're going to two decimal places on their own accord when they get a sum like that. Because we know when it is in two decimal places, it will be over, the denominator will be 100. And we get into the position where we have numerator over denominator and our students can understand what that means. I'm just going to do this first one so we understand. So we'd be writing back out two, looking at it as a fraction, and it is 5, 8 over 100. This, we say, we must make that, that makes certain that the denominator for this two would be over 100. So what we're going to do, we're going to add a zero in the 100 position because there's nothing there, all right? And when that happens, this now becomes 6, 0 over 100. This can be written, so we have this as 19 over 100, because that's the position. And then we want to change this into the 100th position, adding in the 0 for the 100th place. And then this now can be written as 1 and 40 over 100. 100. This makes it easier for the students now to understand which is the largest and which is the smallest because they're now dealing with denominators which are the same. Do not take for granted that they understand that 19 hundredths is smaller than 6 tenths. They may not be there at that position because of what I said about development of the brain. And sometimes, yes, in the mathematics classroom, I have to teach you some biology as it relates directly to the brain. Because how children learn is extremely important. And we have to make certain our teachers know that. And I'm so glad now that we're going to have continuing professional development for teachers because I want to come back to do some of those lectures to our teachers to make certain they understand that not their fault, knowledge is missing. There's a gap in knowledge in terms of saying, how do we process the learning package for our students to understand? Because don't tell me our students can do mathematics, all right? But it is just how we have to package the learning process for them to understand. 
So once that is done now, and that is why I get angry when teachers give students a whole page because it's out of a tech, it's out of a workbook. So they just give them the page and say, page 20, go and do it. Each exercise is different and you should go through and see what the difficulty would have been. Are our students just completing an exercise or are we making certain that this is education for knowledge and for learning all right not to complete a syllabus but to make certain that the students understand so if I ask them about something that was taught last week they know because the concept has been ingrained on their little brains but not by root by understanding and explanation Okay, so that is important. So I also have to do some theoretical aspect of learning when we give you these sums on the board. And that is why I'm saying for each exercise in a, in a workbook, you have got to examine it and see if this is fair to the things you're asking your students to go home to do as task. All right, because all teaching should be to take us a little further than we were when we started. Right, let us see how quickly then that we can run through the other parts of these now that we understand what is the process involved. So we have made certain that our students understand and you take some time in your classroom and give them these things and tell them what, okay? So that they understand that this is what we have to do. Now, to make certain you understand all that I have said a while ago, too, because you're saying, yes, Miss Weston, that's what we want to hear. That is what it is. We are going to send you on a break, and when you come back, we are going to now work the algorithm. So there has to be a time for explanation more than just saying, turn in your books and turn to page so and so and do that work, all right? Take time, because once they have learned it, that's it for the rest of their lives. That's it for the rest of their lives, okay? So see you as soon as we get back. Be sure that you're working in the same units of measure when performing calculations. If a problem involves inches, feet, and yards, be sure to make the appropriate conversions so all of your values are in the same unit of measure. For example, change all values to feet. I may not hear, but that does not and should not affect my ability to learn and to function in the real world. I am a gifted student. I need the opportunity to soar. Support me in my climb to a higher levels of learning. Some of our children have special educational needs. They have a right to an education. So, let us teach them the way that they learn and help them to achieve their full potential. Right, so you had a break, and you understand now that when you approach a mathematics classroom with Miss Weston, it's not just maths, it's biology too, because a learning process and the brains has to come into it, and we have to know all that information. 
we are going to be some of the brightest people on the planet of this earth, all right? Because our whole business is that of educating. And educating does not mean just learning something by rote. We want to know why. We want to know how. Okay? And not because teacher said so. There's a principle involved. So, we made the point before you went to your break that because now we're dealing with two position, one position, two position, one position, we want to unify them. And we're going to say that we do, because we have two positions, we want all of them to have two positions. So if we have just point six, we want it to go to point six zero so that we can be in the hundredth position so that we make us certain that our students know all the denominators are the same so that for our numerator we can easily see which number is the smallest one. Do not shun them from the reasoning. Don't just say six tenths, they may not understand, all right? So we're going to make all of them equivalent fractions and then we can ask them to give us in from smallest to largest or even from largest to smallest because no, they understand. Therefore, teachers, you have to take time and to examine those assignments you're giving those students and to see if there's any hidden intricacy that you need to explain further. All right? Oh, my. Yes. Delisha is at home listening. Aisha is here. Mommy's in the classroom. This big, large classroom. Jetta is behind the camera. And I know that his daughter is also listening too because she's saying, but daddy, I can do that. So, Aisha, are you ready then to tell me which would be starting with the smallest number? And we're using this sort of working to, give, to put these numbers that they have given us and we're going to arrange them in order of size with from the smallest to the largest. Let us hear your voice now, Aisha. Tell me what am I writing? So I'm writing 19 over 100. Then I'm writing 58 over 100. Then I'm writing 60 over 100. And 1 and 40 over 100. And I'm writing whole number 2. Can we now translate them back to decimal numbers, please? What would it be? 0.19. So it would be 0 0.19. See, she's having fun. 0 0.58. She can't believe she's such a good mathematician. Go ahead. And this is the 0 0.6. Mm-hmm. 1.4 and 2. I can't believe she's a mathematician. Oh, my two minutes ago, you can't tell her that. You know, and you know how her little daughter jump in and clap in. Let them see you at work, all right? School days are not over. I hear some people saying, school, Carleen. Carleen here too, every, every time. As soon as you see, don't care where you are, you make that space a classroom, okay? And if it's mathematics, just say, just a second, give me a little seat here and go with it, all right? So that is the answer. What did we do? We took them back to something because we did fractions and they know, okay? And in our position, it's the hundredth position. We have got to make certain the denominators are the same and then our students will start seeing numerators and guess the numerator says how much we're taking or how much we're giving away. And then right away they can say which is the smallest piece, which is the smallest portion, and which one, which one, which one. And we get it right away. Make certain the numbers become alive and they don't stay on this page as any abstract anything. All right? Uh-huh. So, having done that one so lovely, Aisha is not afraid, okay? And no longer am I going to say she's a silent spring because she's here. She's not just going to be keeping time. So when you have your people around you, you understand? Don't just give them no one position. 
What is it this nation needs to grow? Multi-talented, multi-talented individuals, okay? So we must be prepared. As soon as you see somebody doing something, you must stop and say, what does that teach me? And that's how we're going to grow. Yes, Aisha and Jetta can help her too, all right? This time, these are the numbers we're dealing with. And let us put them over here in bold so that we see it is now 0 0.03 and it is 0 0.2 and we also have 2 and we have 1.4 and we have 0 0.49. Give you a chance to write them, okay? And we write them and we write them. Jetta, what is the first thing we observe? Uh, the highest number, you are going to the hundreds place, the number goes to the hundreds. Right, because we have, it's now mixed up that we have hundredth position with tenth position. So we want to make certain that we, there's uniformity, okay? So how are we going to take it into the hundredth position? Right. We are going to fill the hundredth space that they didn't give us with zeros okay another way i'm sure my professor dr gates would be saying you're not just filling the space you're decreasing by tenth one okay and what we do to the numerator we must do to the denominator all right so that is right so this is now so we're going 0 0.20 uh dr gates is laughing yeah two and then we're going here 1.40 and then here we go in 0 0.49 what are we going to write after this now? What are we going to do with, it, with them? So we're going to transform them to fractions. So what am I going to write here? Three over so it's 3 over 100. I shall continue for Jetto because he's doing the camera. What else are we going to write? 20 over 100. <laughs> yes, 20 over 100. And then we're going to write back two. Yes, we're not touching that. Yes, we're going to write 1 and 40 over 100, yes. And then we're going to write 49 over 100. A. A. And what did we say we have to do? What did the problem say? Write these decimals in order of size. And how should we start? Smallest first. Okay, so we have to look for those instructions. Smallest first. So we teach our students to... Look at the instruction that they are given, okay? Uh-huh, Aisha, take it away. What are we writing? <laughs> uh, we did write three over 100 already, so how would we write it in French? Oh, okay, okay, just a second. You want to write them yes, here first as three over 100. Mm-hmm. 20 over 100. 20 over 100. Forty-nine over a hundred. Wow, she's smarter than I am right now. One and forty over a hundred. And two. You hear the style, boy? <laughs> oh, yeah, Yankee and all come in. All right. Now, so in terms of decimals, what will we be writing? Zero point zero three. Zero point zero three. Let us stop right here for a second, um, because we want to teach you grannies. As long as you have a number, one figure, and it is to two positions, the, the number takes the hundredth position, so you have to fill the tenth position with a zero. And that is why Aisha told me that the answer here would be um, 0 0.03, and not what you would say. But Miss Weston, so I could just add a zero behind. No, you can't, because this is saying my name is 300th, okay? And then they're saying, and I don't want a companion, so I don't have any tenth. All right? So to fill that tenth position, you have to put a zero. All right. Go ahead, Aisha. And then it is 0 0.2. Yes. 0.49. And it is 0 0.49. 1.4. 1 1.4. And 2. And 2. Okay? Now, um, now, just because we were telling them about 100th and 100th um, position, teachers, if the students write this as 0 
and this as 1.40, it is correct, okay? It is correct. So give the children their marks. Give the children their marks, okay? So that is what we have. So you see, in just taking them back, showing them, teacher taught you something yesterday, but you know what? We left out a step. So let's go back and tell them, when you reach home, teach your mommies and daddies. Teach your brother, teach your sister. Oh, they love that, okay? And that is where learning is gonna take place. And grannies, if you did it, you're going to say, you know, when you were in school today, I was listening to Miss Weston, and this is what she was doing. Do you know how to do this? Play a game with them. Play a game with them, okay? Show them. And look what we have here. We have place value, we have fractions, we have equivalent fractions, and still we are on the topic of decimals. There is never a single entity when it comes to mathematics, all right? Because we like to share. That is what we would be saying. Now, just before we run away with you, we have some numbers here, fractions, and we are asking you to write these fractions as decimals. That is what this should say, as decimal, decimals, decimal numbers, okay? As decimal numbers. And we can rattle those off. Ah, can't we, Aisha? Tell me the answer immediately. 17 over 100, how would we write that as a decimal number? 0.17. So that, 0 0.17. How would we write 4 over 100 as a decimal number? 0 0.04. 0 0.04. How would we write 4 and 23 over 100 as a decimal number? 4.23. Right, 4.23. And how would we write 6 and 9 over 100 as... And it is 6.09. And you know what? Not a thing would be lost for her today. Her score is excellent. That is what we <laughs> said in her book. And you see the face for Miss Western boy. Okay? Excellent. That is what Aisha has today. Right, she's a bright student, right? Okay. Anytime you enter the mathematics classroom, you can't leave empty. Don't care who you are. Don't care if you never did maths before. Don't care how hard your head is. The harder, the better. All right? Because I can work with that. I have something hard to hold on and to soften up. So you just come. Because no concept is too great for you to learn. We are going to be back next week to teach you some more and to take you along. And guess where we're going? We're going to go now to some algebra with our fifth formers, okay? And you can start looking up and seeing because we will be telling you, and I have done it already, so you can go to YouTube and you can see algebra where I was doing factorization because we're going to be now working from the examination papers our question number two. So we're going to be writing our number twos. You're going to see that they're, they're the same just talking about different things as if CX does not know how to phrase them again. And so they're just giving you different things, but the same old garbage in new bottles, okay? And that is what's going to happen. We must show the world that we can do mathematics, and we can do it, okay? Because somebody asked me where was mathematics started. I want to tell you it's in Africa. We'll come back and tell you the story. All right, our ancestors are there. We have it in our blood, and we can do it as Antiguan. So have a good evening. See you next time. And if you see Aisha on the road, give her a cone of ice cream because she did excellent today. So until next time, this is Karen Weston and Jetta and the whole EBU unit saying, have a good evening and a pleasant week. Bye. Join us next time for another in the series, Mastering Mathematics, a production of the Education Broadcasting Unit in the Ministry of Education and the ABI.